Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to my Dark Souls Remastered walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And in this walkthrough, we're going to go over all the NPC side quests. We're also going to get all the key items in the game, and we may get a few of the unique weapons. We won't end up getting all of them, and the main reason why is because you have to play through the game multiple times. I'm just not willing to do that. Before we get started, let's go ahead and look at our system settings. We're going to go into options. Over here, I turn off the camera auto wall recovery, and the reason why is to save myself some grief and unnecessary deaths. Whenever you have the camera auto wall recovery on, Sometimes whenever you're walking on a ledge or a narrow beam or anything like that, the camera will flip around to get out of that object's way and you could walk right off the ledge or beam. And yeah, that's not really fun. So I go ahead and I turn that off. Over here, the brightness, I turned up to 10. Hopefully it'll help in some of the darker areas. We'll see. And then my button settings. I always change out my jump to L3 instead of running and hitting circle two times. That way I know that I'm gonna jump no matter what, whenever I hit L3. All right, so the network settings, not system settings, the network settings, I have it offline just because this is a walkthrough. I don't want player messages or, or blood stains or even um, player signs littering the, the floor. I'm not sure if the online community is still really big in Dark Souls right now considering Elden Ring's out and Dark Souls 3 and all of that but it may be or if like you have like a friend or family member that has Dark Souls as well you can always you know play with them as well all right so now that that's all out of the way let's go ahead and start a new game <laughs> it's gonna ask me to do all these settings I guess I could have done all that in front of everybody, but whatever. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and name our character. Mr. John Wayne. Mr. Wayne. We're going to be male. I like to start out with a deprived, but... I usually actually do a deprived or a thief. The reason why I would do a thief is because they get the master key whenever we whenever they start out. But a deprived, you can really bring the stats anywhere. Deprived's kind of nice if you're trying to build a certain type of character. But th for this walkthrough, we're going to do a warrior. And the reason why is because a warrior is a good kind of class to start out with for anybody that's new to the game. If you're moderately, I would say, familiar with the Soul series, you can go with a Thief or a Deprived. But if you're brand new, like this is your first entry, I would go with a Warrior. A Warrior or a Knight, these two are pretty safe classes. Our starting gift, the only three I would say don't get for anybody is the Goddess's Blessing. That's a one-time use healing item and status ailment recovery item. Um, it's one-time use, so I wouldn't bother getting that. The binoculars you can get as soon as you get into Firelink Shrine, so that's really pointless to get. And the pendant does absolutely nothing, so I wouldn't get that either. Everything else is pretty viable to get. I mean, the tiny beings ring, you get that later into the game. But if you want it now, you can always pick it up. The master key, most people choose that whenever they're starting out. But even the black firebombs and twin humanities can be useful. We're actually going to choose the old witch's ring. The reason why is because later on into the game, we'll be able to talk to an NPC using that ring. And uh, it'll give us a little bit of extra dialogue. Our physique is going to be average. We're going to have a commoner face. Hair... Let's go ahead and give ourselves a ponytail and our hair color is going to be black. 
You can customize your character too. It's not the most advanced character customizer, but you can do it if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to do it. Instead, we're going to go ahead and start the game. I'll see everybody right after the cutscene. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire, came disparity. Heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Wind's mighty gods peeled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. And Seath the scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. your fate.
Welcome, everybody, to the Northern Undead Asylum. That knight up there just knocked a corpse down for us to pillage. That's going to give us the dungeon cell key. Before we get out of our cell, we will be fat rolling if we keep all this armor on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our inventory, hit square on our standard helmet, hit square on the hard bodied leather or hard leather body, and then our hard leather gauntlets. And we'll take the old witch's ring off as well because we don't need that. Over here on the floor, these are developer messages. Teaches you the basic controls of the game. We don't need that. If you hit R1, that's your fast or light attack. R2 is your heavy or strong attack, whichever you would like to call it. Doesn't matter. Either way, it's all the same. Over there, we can see a stray demon. We won't have to fight that just yet. Later on in the game, we'll come back to the Undead Asylum and kill that stray demon that's walking around down there. If you want to read the developer messages, have at it. Nothing wrong with that. We can also hit R3 to lock on to enemies or lock off. I would kill all these hollows, by the way. I know they're only worth 20 souls, but every soul kind of counts right now. At least at the beginning of the game, you want as many souls as you can get. Over here is our first bonfire. If we light it, we can sit at it, restore all of our Estus, which we don't have Estus just yet. We'll get that here soon. You can also sit here to replenish your health. But if any, if you sit here, any enemies that you've killed will respawn. Over there is a, uh, a door we can't go through just yet. The only door we can go through is right here in front of us. Let's go ahead and open that. Before we go through the door, though, I want to back up a little bit. Up top there, you can see the straight, not stray demon. This is the asylum demon. The stray demon's just below us. He's going to jump down as soon as we get towards this developer message over here. There we go. And we want to run left. This door will shut and the boss fight will end immediately. There's another bonfire. Just in case you got hit, you can rest there and restore some health. Let's go ahead and take our broken sword off. We have a hollow that's going to be shooting arrows at us. Got the heater shield. Hollow's going to run away from us because he's a pansy. Pick up our long sword. Right here. Let's go ahead and equip that. Up top here, L1 raises your shield so you can block. L2, you can do a parry. I'll show a parry here in a little bit. First, I want to try to get a backstab on this hollow here. Nope. We did not succeed in our backstab. That's unfortunate. Down there, we can see the bonfire we lit earlier. If you come over here, you can see an item. We can't get that just yet. When we come back to the Undead Asylum, we'll end up getting this item. Over there is a dead end. The only way to go is forward. It's very linear at the very beginning, but things will open up here in just a bit. Up at the top, you can see a ball. If you go up there, it's going to roll down. So you want to step out of the way. Break that wall just there. And then we're going to see a familiar face. This, this is the knight that threw that corpse down to us. Let's go ahead and talk to him, see what he's got to say. Oh, you... You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Regrettably, 
I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. We finally got our Estus flask. To be able to use that, you just hit square, and that'll heal a portion of your health. And he also gave us a key to unlock the door up top there. Before we go up there, if we step down just a little bit, you can hear him die. We run over here, we can actually see him fall to the floor. When he dies, he'll give us a hundred souls. Let's run down the stairs real quick. We're going to open up this door. That's the door I said we couldn't open just yet earlier. Up top here, we're going to have a hollow. I want to see if I can get a parry off. So whenever you're trying to successfully parry an enemy, you hit L2 at the top of their attack. And usually, if you're fast enough, you can pull off the parry and then hit R1 for a repost. All right, got the parry, and then we get the repost. Let's open up the door. We're going to have two more hollows over here. I like to lure them out. That way I don't have to deal with the archer shooting arrows at me. And, no, they got stuck. Sometimes they can be really stupid and get stuck Trying to get through this doorway. It all worked out anyways. This guy's going to be shooting arrows at you as you're trying to fight those guys. There we go. Now we got a backstab. So whenever you get in a backstab, you want to go behind the enemy and hit R1. You kind of have to stop for like a second, if that. You just have to have, have a little bit of a pause and then hit R1. To successfully get that backstab. If you're running around an enemy. And you're con continuing to run. You're not going to get the backstab. You're going to get a running slash. So just keep that in mind. Here we got another enemy. Let's see if we can't parry him. We got a parry. Thankfully. I didn't look like a fool. Every now and then these uh, hollows. These ones and the ones out there. Will drop items you can get a bow from the the archers it's really rare but it is possible we're about to fight the asylum demon now but before we do i like to do a forward r2 jumping attack and then hit r1 to get double damage on the asylum demon as we're dropping down on top of them Every now and then I will fail at it, but I will try not to fail in this um, walkthrough doing this. That way I can show it off to everybody. So let's hope for the best. Oh, I failed. I failed. I got too nervous. As soon as I seen that I went left, I knew that I failed at it. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. You just have to make sure that you're right on top of them whenever you fall down. You can't get the double damage whenever you're jumping far to the left. And that's really the thing. When you come through that... Also, he gives us a big pilgrim key. I'm sorry about that. I got busy talking and not talking about the items. And he also gives us a humanity. These doors open back up. That's the first bonfire. You can sit at it to heal yourself if you really feel the need to, but it, it's not really necessary. So whenever you're jumping down, you don't want to jump far to the left like I did. It's just not going to work on the double damage. 
is being too fast and 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 impatient. You want to jump forward or I guess more to the left, not more to the right. I said left earlier, but more to the left than right is what you want to jump. Just because of the way that the Asylum Demon is positioned. So you'll do that forward R2 and then you'll hit R1 as you're dropping down. If you get 440 damage done to the Asylum Demon, then you got the extra damage. If you get 338 like me, then you missed it. Let's pillage this corpse. This is a soul of a lost undead. If we come up here, we can see a unique NPC. This is kind of like our trading system. It's really unique in the way of you drop a certain items into that nest. And then you quit game and reload and a different item will be in the nest. This is Snuggly. Let's go ahead and get a tiny bit of dialogue from Snuggly. And that's really what Snuggly will say. Unless you put an item in there. Then it'll have different dialogue. We'll worry about that later. Right here is a good example of if you're trying to look down. And you have that auto wall recovery on. Your camera may snap this way to get out of this structure's way. And then you'll be walking and then boop right off the edge. And it'll be your first death before you even get out of the... Undead Asylum. If you didn't die to the Asylum Demon, that is. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the Undead Asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. Welcome to Firelink Shrine, everyone. Here we can sit at this bonfire. Normally we get five Estus. Now because this bonfire is kindled, we're going to get ten Estuses. There's a reason why this bonfire is kindled, by the way. And in the next video, we'll go over that. In the next video, we'll go over quite a few things. We'll talk about humanity making ourselves human, kindling a bonfire, and what benefits we can get while kindling the bonfire. And we'll also talk to a few NPCs here in Firelink Shrine. So with that all being said, I would like to tell everybody, thank you for stopping by and watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. But like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.